Hello there, my name is Shane Olson, and today I want to talk to you about a really cool plugin that Pixelogic offers that's called the ZBrush Startup Utility Plugin. It's a plugin that I should have been using for a long, long time, and I've just recently been using it. I love it, and I want to share it with you today. So let's get to it. Okay, so first of all, we need to download this plugin and you'll find it on the Pixelogic download page. It's on pixelogic.com slash ZBrush slash download center slash Z plugins, or you can just do a Google search for Z plugins. And then you scroll down and it will tell you all of the plugins here ship with ZBrush. So you don't need to download any of these, they come with it. But if you scroll down even more, you'll find another light blue section right here and it says the plugins listed below do not ship with ZBrush. So there are a ton of really cool plugins here that you can get a lot for uh, doing jewelry and stuff like that. But there's one in particular right here that I want you to grab and install. It's called the Z Startup Utility. You just download it here and then you install it in your Z Startup Plugin 64 folder. That's where you put it. And there's, there is a... Uh, uh, documentation that tells you how to install it when you download the plugin. Okay. So after you download it and then you start ZBrush up, um, it will be installed. And if you come over to Z plugins, it will be right here. Z startup utility. Now I have this Z plugin menu mounted in my left drawer over here. If you double click it and open it up, if you have my user interface installed, you'll see it. Now this interface I give away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. The link is in the description down below. And it also comes with my brushes and my ruler file. You can get all that for free, go check it out. Anyway, you'll see this Z plugin menu mounted over here on the left. And if you open up this Z startup utility, what this is, it's a utility that will uh, set a whole bunch of settings every single time you open up ZBrush so you don't have to worry about it again. It's kind of a quality of life thing that really, really helps. And I wish I would have downloaded it and used it a long, long time ago because every single time I open up ZBrush, I'm constantly turning things on or turning things off. For example, I'm gonna go through all of these and tell you how I have mine set up so you can decide on what you want yours to be when you load yours up, okay? Here we go from the top. If you want to store your current tool, that just a tool is your mesh that you have loaded. If you want to store this and, and, and have it come in every single time you start, you can do that. Now, I have a ruler file project that I start with every single time, and it's a project, not a tool. And there are a lot of things that get saved with projects. I talk about this a lot in other videos, but I save all of my models as tools and I save my startup file as a project file. I know that sounds really technical, but project files save a whole bunch of stuff, including history, and they just get too big, so I typically don't save my models as projects. And if you hit comma on your keyboard, you can see if you've downloaded my stuff and installed it, you can see the ruler file right there as a project. So every single time I go to startup ZBrush, I will start it up and then I'll double click on this ruler project file and then it will look like this to start up. And I will, this is where I start every single time. It has a start sphere and I start, if you ever watch my live streams on Pixelogic, you'll see that I start every single character from this sphere and I just start going and that's what I start with. So again, if you wanna grab this, it's, it's for free over my website. Okay, so I, I usually have that turned off because I work on different characters every single time and I wanna bring in whatever I want, not start up with a tool that, you know, I may have left behind, I don't know. I just have that turned off because I load in my own tools, okay? And store material, yeah, sure, I leave this. Uh, my favorite my favorite material is called Skin Shade 4. That's because I, I don't really like to use materials very much, like all these materials, because I can't see the poly paint underneath the color. Um, so I will use the Skin Shade most of all. So I'll, I'll leave that turned on. Start in edit mode. I Edit mode just means that you're ready to sculpt. So yes, I start in edit mode. Store current brush. I don't really care one way or the other, but sure, have it turned on. Back face mask on. Now back face masking is if you're working on something very, very thin, like a cape or something like that. But if you're not working on a cape, then having back face mask turned on by default could kind of trip you up. 
because it will not only slow ZBrush down sometimes, but it will also, if you're sculpting on a surface and it's just acting really strange, that might be the reason, is because you have back face masking on. So I usually leave it turned off. Now dynamic brush, I usually leave that turned off. That's because my ruler file is set to the specific size that ZBrush wants me to be in. So I don't need to set my dynamic size for my brush up and down beyond that. Dynamic, it's usually underneath, you can see it right there, dynamic on the brush size. You'll wanna turn that off if you ever have your, your ZBrush scale just really strange and your brush won't scale up or down small enough or large enough, so you wanna turn dynamic off. That's why I just, I just leave it off. Okay, so local symmetry turned on, sure. Um, why not? I usually have local symmetry on. Now local symmetry, it works best in when you're scaling. So if you're ever scaling something here, let's just, let's just show you really quickly. I'm just going to insert a couple of spheres here. Okay. Now if by default, if I were to scale these spheres, see local symmetry is turned on. So it's working correctly. But if I turn local symmetry off, which I have over here on my user interface, if I turn that off then the scale is going to scale across the center axis of the world rather than locally. So when I'm scaling, I usually like it to be set to local scale. That's better. Okay, so yes, I want that on. Now rotate on Y. This is an interesting one. This is if you are coming from another program such as Maya or 3D Studio Max, you just don't like how the camera rotates or orbits. There is a specific setting. I'll show you right up here under transform you can see it right here, X, Y, Z. That means it's on trackball navigation. That means you can spin the entire world all the way around and upside down. And when you're coming from something like Maya, it's very disorienting and you can't really get your head around it why this navigation is so strange. When you get used to it, like I have, I've grown to love it. I wish the trackball navigation was in every other program. But for now, to get used to it, what you can do is just click on this rotate on Y only and it will make the navigation a lot like Maya. Okay, so if you want to do that, turn that on, and that is rotate on Y. That's what that is right there. And align cursor, I, I don't really use that, so I leave it turned off. Enable dynamic solo, that's just, if, you're, if you have a, a smaller machine and you want, to, you want to turn this solo on, you can turn on dynamic. So whenever you rotate your objects, see how I'm rotating, when you rotate, it will solo whatever subtool that you're currently active on and that could be a way to tell you which which subtool you're on but i don't like that feature so i usually have it turned off okay that's what that is and then lightbox close lightbox is just this and when you first open up zbrush by default this opens up and you select this and i don't you know some people don't like it some people do but i usually want it to be open so i can double click on my ruler file so i like it to be open so i'm going to leave it turned off. Now store ZApp link views. ZApp link is something that you can send your different camera angles over to Photoshop or whatever you have set up with ZApp link and you can save those but typically I don't. It's completely up to you. Okay now spotlight project off. This is a big one that gets me every single time. If I have an image loaded in here through spotlight I'm going to go grab a texture. I'm just going to load in one of these standard textures and load it into Spotlight right here. This Spotlight. Okay, this is Spotlight. If I wanted to load in a, a concept image that I'm using as reference, I will want this uh, to be turned off, this Spotlight projection to be turned off. And usually it's in my custom menu down here, Spotlight projection. I will oftentimes forget to turn that off and it just drives me insane. Okay, so I love this Z startup utility to start with the spotlight project turned off because that's what you want. Okay, good thing. And store spotlight images. This is really nice when you're working on something and you close it, like you're working on a model, you close ZBrush, you open it back up and then you have to load your spotlight images back up into ZBrush. Well, this will make it so you don't have to do that. They'll just come right in. It will remember your last spotlight images. So that's really nice. You won't have to save them. And then if you want live Boolean turned on, I suggest to leave it turned off unless you're doing a lar lot of uh, hard surface sculpting because this will, this will throw you off and it will also slow ZBrush down. So leave that turned off. 
Sculptress mode on. Now I use Sculptress Pro a lot recently, like in my workflow, I use it a lot, but I want to specifically turn it on when I'm ready. I don't want to have it turned on by default, so I'll leave that turned off. And then this is the thing that I really, really love for my Sculptress. It, it remembers my Sculptress settings. Because usually what I, I like to do is go under Stroke, under Sculptress Pro, and then turn this on. I like to turn Adaptive Size off and, and leave my settings up like this. And so every single time I was having to open ZBrush, I'd have to go in there. If you've ever watched my live streams, go in there and turn that stuff off. And it, it was driving me crazy. It just takes, it's another extra step. So it's really nice to just save those settings. Now, remember smooth alt size. That's just your smooth alt uh, ZBrush size. If you use that a lot, turn that on. If not, eh, don't worry about it. And then when you're all done, you, all you have to do is just click on this install custom startup. Done. And that's it. And it will remember. And if you don't like it, you can just turn it off or uninstall it just like that. And then you can close it up. And every time you open up ZBrush, it will remember all of that stuff and you're good to go. So it's a really, really nice plugin. I love it. I don't know, like I said, I don't know why I, I never used it in the past. Yeah, I really enjoy it. So I hope you enjoy it as well. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that ZBrush Utility helps you out. All right, see you in the next one. Have a good day.